Hello and welcome to another video spelling tutorial. Today we will talk about VidiNet. We start off from VidiNet.net. This is where we choose the sign up option for new users. Once you've entered an email address and filled out the details, a confirmation email will be sent to the address. After logging in for the first time, you will encounter different areas within VidiNet. These are all listed in the navigation menu. The My Services area includes a list of all other services you've acquired. In essence, your system's catalog of services available for use. Selecting any of these will allow you to jump into a dedicated menu for their respective settings. In this case, however, it's empty. The Store area includes a list of services offered through VidiNet as well as their price. This is where you acquire the services that later show up in the My Services area. The billing area offers an overview of all the costs. The settings area allows you to manage your VidiNet instance as well as users. Don't worry, we'll be viewing and explaining these in greater detail throughout the video. As a first time VidiNet user, you will not have any services. You'll need to start off with a basic package. Going over to the store area, select the VidiCore starter package. This will get you all you need to start your own system. While the trial version offers plenty of credits to play around with, as well as a broad range of functions and options, it is limited in terms of scalability. If you want to become a customer, contact VidiSpy. All the choices, assets, and metadata you've created in your trial system will carry over. It's important to note that before selecting this option, you should already have an Amazon S3 storage. VidiNet will guide you through all the necessary steps to get your system running. Most of the fields have an I tooltip offering an explanation for each. When selecting the API endpoint URL, it's important to note that this cannot be changed later on. Your service location should always be as close as possible to your storage location. And your VidiSpine version should always be the latest with the auto update on. Some customers may require very specific versions, which is why the options are available. The VidiNet service group option offers them the possibility to organize your services for an overall better handling. You can filter your billing by group, as well as assign your user teams to a group. Next, we'll go over to the storage phase. This is where we enter all the keys from our S3 storage, which you should have available before reaching this phase. In the thumbnail phase, you can specify a new storage or use the same one as specified earlier. Now that we've reached the transcoder, we can select another of the options available in the store. Alternatively, we could select an already acquired service from My Services. In this case, none are available since we just started. The review phase offers one the possibility to go over any of the settings. Now that we're done with the VidiSpine API Starter Edition, we're able to jump to the My Services area and see that both the Starter Edition as well as the Transcoder service are listed. Clicking on the Starter Edition, users are provided with a dedicated window displaying the service's current settings.
While customers may want to create their own UI by developing against Speedy Spine's API, the Starter Edition also includes a basic UI. As a quick example, we're going to do two jobs via the UI. First, we're going to pick a local file and import it to our storage using the Upload option. Now that we've imported the file, we can go ahead and transcode it into a different shape. You'll notice that when a job occurs, such as a transcoding job, a cost estimation is prompted. Now that we're done, we can move over to the billing area. This area offers an overview of all the costs. These can be filtered by group or individual service. Additionally, you can even see the cost at a job level. Using these services uses up the initial credits made available with the Starter Edition. Once you use up your credits, don't worry, the account will be frozen and you can contact Speedy Spine to become a paid customer. Moving over to the Settings area, this is where you can manage your users by inviting or removing users, as well as group your users and services. You can create a new service group and assign existing services to that group. You can even assign existing user teams to the service group. If you go to the Users section, you can invite new users via mail. And once you have enough users, you can group these into teams. Grouping services and users into teams and using it as a filter can be particularly useful when viewing information under both the billing and my services areas. When in the my services area, selecting a particular service will open a dedicated view with a broad range of additional information relevant to that service. It is important to note that for different services, different information will be displayed. What most services will have in common is the option to pause the service, only for paying customers. This prevents one from incurring additional charges. If you have any questions or run into problems running our services, feel free to reach out to us and contact our support team. There is a support link on the top right corner. And that's it. Now that you've finished watching this video, you should be familiar with the Vidinet basics and you can start your own Vidicore starter edition.